I'm coming at you today from my home office because here in a minute, we're gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to set up your lead processing management system through a software platform called pebblerei.com. Pebble is essentially a CRM platform that's tailor-made for land investors. For those that might not know, a CRM or customer relationship management software is a platform that essentially functions like the command center for a business. Now, if we were purists here, we would probably categorize Pebble as a PRM for property relationship management as opposed to a CRM because the entire software is actually oriented around the property as opposed to the customer. But all that being said, the function is still the same. Once set up, Pebble is going to serve as the command center for your land business. Here in a moment when we jump on the computer together, I'm gonna to walk you through some of Pebble's best features, like how you can generate a purchase agreement with the click of a button, how you can seamlessly integrate your business email as well as business phone system all within the platform, as well as track all of your seller leads, inventory, document templates, and much, much more. This environment allows us to have standardized document templates, custom deal boards where we can track seller leads and inventory. Let's walk through getting set up with Pebble together. All right, now that we've logged into Pebble, let me kind of lay the foundation here and provide a 30,000 foot overview. Scrolling over to the left-hand side here, you're gonna see several different tabs, ranging from notifications down to settings. The notification section, simply put, is where you're gonna receive notification if and when you have a team that at mentions you within a specific comment within a deal record. From there, we have the dashboard section, which kind of provides an overview of your stats. How many total deals you've added, how many properties you've bought, how many have sold, how much projected profit you're making, and so on. Now, in order for the stats to be accurate within the dashboard, you have to update your property records accordingly. The account that you're seeing here is kind of a dummy account, so none of the stats that you see here represent the actuals of my own land business. Another thing worth mentioning underneath the dashboard section is this task feature. Whenever you are assigned a task within the Pebble environment, your tasks are going to show up in this section. Moving on from there is the campaign section, and this is the section where you upload the CSV file of property owners that you've targeted within a direct mail campaign to the Pebble environment. For the sake of keeping things brief, I actually created an entirely separate lesson solely dedicated to the ins and outs of the campaign section. So you're definitely gonna wanna check that out. Moving on from there, you have the inbox section, which is kind of your first line of defense when it comes to screening leads. All inbound leads, the first place they go is the inbox. And this is where you're going to separate the wheat from the chaff, as they say. So people that are not qualified, they're wanting market value, they're telling you to go kick rocks, the property's sold already, they want a million dollars and their property's worth 20,000. Those leads don't really merit further analysis, so they die at this level. Moving on from there, we have the deal board section, which in our environment, we have two deal boards. We have the acquisitions pipeline and then inventory. Then we have the property section where we can access and filter all the different property records that are created every single time we upload a campaign. And then we have websites, which by the way, if you are looking for kind of a basic plug and play website, Pebble REI provides some great options for you. And then we have the settings section where we find what I call the document template library. Let's now circle back to the seller inbox section and I'm gonna walk you through the entire workflow of processing a lead within Pebble from start to finish. Underneath seller inbox, again, every time we get a brand new contact from a lead, whether it's via email, text message, phone call, voicemail, or what have you, all that initial correspondence happens here underneath seller inbox. Now, in order for the seller inbox to be set up correctly, you need to come over here to settings, and if you wanna receive your business emails right within the Pebble environment, you're gonna to have to connect an email account, clicking on this button here and following the prompts. Pebble also has the ability to be your virtual phone provider. So you no longer need things like Ring Central, Open Phone, Call Rail, or what have you. Pebble can facilitate all of that for you. If you wanna use Pebble for that purpose, you're gonna come here and select Add Phone Number, select a phone number for your specific market, and I would recommend that you use a local number because it does give you some competitive advantage. 
And then once set up, you're gonna come here to this edit button and then upload the recorded MP3 file of your voicemail. Alternatively, if you don't wanna use Pebble as your virtual phone provider because you're partial to another platform for one reason or another, but you still want missed calls, text messages, and voicemails to populate within the seller inbox in your Pebble environment, what you're gonna do is use this inbox specific email as the designated email address that your preferred virtual phone provider sends notification emails to. That will allow any notification of missed calls, texts, and voicemails to automatically populate underneath the seller inbox. If set up correctly, the people who are going to leave a message are going to cite a reference number that you list at the top of your direct mail letter. You want to make sure that you use the Pebble specific campaign codes, which look like this. Come here underneath add deal, and then you can create a new deal record simply by citing that reference number. I now can just go down here to the bottom, hit save, and now a brand new deal record is created on my acquisition pipeline. Now, to avoid some confusion here, underneath deal boards, we have what are called deal records. But the way that Pebble is designed is that deal records sync with property records as well as contact records. So whenever I use the Pebble specific campaign code as my reference number and I type it in underneath seller inbox, it will automatically sync the corresponding property record and contact record with the deal record that I just created. And we can see the original conversation that took place underneath the seller inbox that this deal record, property record, and contact record are associated with. If for whatever reason, you end up mailing out a bunch of letters associated with a particular direct mail campaign, but you did not use the Pebble specific campaign codes, have no fear, there's a way around it. What you would do is still come over here underneath add deal and you would create a new deal record. But instead of putting in the campaign code, you would simply hit save. You could go over here to the acquisition pipeline to access this deal record, or if you wanted to, you could just go over here to the name of the deal record, which acts as a hyperlink, and then open it into a new tab. From here, we see a blank deal record. Under the circumstances where we did not use the Pebble specific campaign codes as our reference numbers, what we would do is come over here to the property section, add property, and we would search existing, and we would either use the APN number associated with the property, the owner on title for the property, or if you wanted to, you could filter by field, scroll down, and I have created for our custom environment on behalf of Land Maverick Society, a custom field called alternative reference number. And if you type in the alternative reference number that was assigned to this field, when that specific campaign was uploaded, you should be good to go. Then in order to find the contact record, you would simply click through to the property detail record in full, and then see who the owner is on title, grab their name, go back to the deal record, add contact, search existing, type in their name, and there you have it. Now you have the contact record and property record tied to the deal record. Now I think it's worth mentioning, since I just highlighted the property record in full, the property section here within the deal record is an abbreviated version of the property record. So we have different sections here that make it convenient to use while we're processing the lead within the deal record. Next, we have a comp section where you can store the URL for the specific comp, the price that it's sold for, the acreage size, and whether it was sold, pending, or listed. Underneath that, we have the seller due diligence questionnaire, which kind of serves as a loose guide of the conversation underneath the first contact stage whenever you reach out to a seller for the first time. After that, we have a thorough due diligence questionnaire, which is the process you walk through on the final phase of due diligence when you call the county. Alternatively, if you wanted to see the thorough due diligence questionnaire in a different format, you can just go to landmavericks.com forward slash DD, and then you can walk through this PDF version of the thorough due diligence questionnaire. Circling back to the overview of the acquisition pipeline, we have several different stages that we've created from new lead, first phase due diligence, then we have first contact, follow-up, negotiations, need slash out for agent valuation, purchase agreement, final phase due diligence, submit for funding, closing on the buying side, and then limbo. This limbo stage is reserved for situations where 
a property is kind of at a stalemate for one reason or another. Maybe for example, your property is going through probate or there are several errors involved to clear title where we have to jump through a bunch of hoops in order to get like five different people to sign off on all the documents. That's what this stage is reserved for. So going back to our example deal record here, what I like to do is remove the number from the deal title and I will either go with the seller name or I will go with information related to the subject property. Also too, underneath the contact record is where I will place the phone number. If I have their email, I'll place it here as well. So from there, we move to first phase due diligence. You're gonna see some automatic tasks populate here that tell you exactly what to do. You're gonna go to land.id and complete the land.id checklist that again is listed here underneath the property section. Then you're also going to go to Redfin and Zillow as well as PropStream and walk through the comp section. If the property passes the first phase of due diligence, we're gonna push the deal record to first contact. Then we can see here a prompt to complete the seller due diligence questionnaire, which again is listed here. After that, we normally would push to need slash out for agent valuation, or we would push to purchase agreement or negotiations. For the sake of keeping things brief, let's just assume that we pushed our deal record here successfully to the purchase agreement stage. In order to generate a purchase agreement, we're gonna come underneath the property record. Then we're gonna come up here to create offer, type in the dollar amount, we'll hit save. And then we're gonna scroll down here to the attachment section. And we're gonna click this button that says generate document. Then we're gonna select from one of our many different purchase agreement templates. And then voila, we can clearly see that Pebble through a series of merge fields is automatically pre-filled a lot of the information directly from the property record. With just a few clicks, we now have a purchase agreement ready to rock. If I was done here, I would hit save and then I would download this and then proceed to send this via email for electronic signature, either through SignWell, DocuSign, PandaDoc, what have you. Going back to the acquisition pipeline here, the next stage from purchase agreement is our final phase of due diligence and we see a couple other automatic tasks that populate here to help guide us on what our next steps are. So underneath the final due diligence phase, we want to complete the thorough due diligence questionnaire by calling the county slash city. We can do that again by following the prompts either listed here or by going to landmarkers.com forward slash DD. Then beyond that, our next task underneath final due diligence is to have our agent conduct a physical walkthrough of the property and solidify their suggested list price, price to sell within about 90 days or less. From there, if your objective is to have us at the Land Maverick Society fund this deal for you, you're gonna push the deal record to the submit for funding stage, and then you're gonna to go to landmavericks.com forward slash funding, and then you're going to walk through the application by hitting the start button here. Just as a reminder, there are three primary pieces of information that you need as a minimum in order to submit a deal for funding. You need to submit a copy of the signed purchase agreement. You need at least one agent opinion of value with the agent's contact information, and you need a completed thorough due diligence questionnaire. From there, we proceed to closing, and if all goes well, we purchase the property and then push this deal record from acquisition pipeline to inventory. How we do that, we go back to the property record and then we go over here to this mark purchase button here at the top, select it, and then if you wanted to, you could actually factor in the exact acquisition costs, closing costs and all within this purchase price, or you could just say, yeah, we purchased it at 45,000, your choice. I'm gonna leave it for sake of example today, just at 45,000, hit save, and then we're gonna go down here underneath deals, and we're gonna to add to board underneath inventory. Underneath the inventory board, I like to use naming conventions that are related to characteristics of the property itself. So in this case, we're gonna go 6.17 acres in Erie County, PA, and then we'll hit save. If we're done, if we've successfully closed on this property, we open up the deal record that's listed underneath the closing buying stage underneath the acquisition pipeline, and then we come up here and click on this close deal button. Now that deal is considered closed and we no longer see it on this stage of the pipeline. If for whatever reason you needed to access closed deal records, you can do so by going over here where it says filter by, and then you just simply toggle on closed deals or all deals. Moving on to the inventory section. This section is pretty straightforward. 99% of the heavy lifting, at least in our business model, 
of the disposition side of your company is outsourced to the land specialized real estate agent. So you definitely want to make sure that your property gets listed and you want to kind of keep a running tab on whether the property has been listed less than 90 days or more than 90 days, because at least in our model, if a property sits on the market more than 90 days, we start to get nervous. So yeah, at a high level, that pretty much covers what Pebble REI brings to the table. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.